Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Oh, you guys know that you know Mr. Russell S Simmons, you know, Mr. You know, Yoga Yoga Ho Hum Hum. Um, he's been in a whole self-exposed exile in Bali. The, during the whole R. Kelly situation, a lot of people were getting caught out. So remember when everything was happening with the R. Kelly case, the whole Harvey Weinstein case was like just lighting up Hollywood, right? And so a lot of people were calling out, you know, all of these men in power, including Russell Simmons. And so he had a lot of sexual allegations placed against him. And all of a sudden we turn around, his ass is in Bali, honey upside down with his legs in the air, you know, doing bicycle kicks and shit. Um, so he's been out there hiding, but he does creep to America every now and then. He'll creep and, you know, come and do things with his daughters, but then his daughters cussed him out a few months ago. So I don't think he'll be coming back anytime soon. So since 2017, he has not addressed any of the allegations that all of these women levied against him. So now today he's finally speaking on Good Morning America. Now, this is a 15 minute interview. We're not going to watch the whole 15 minutes, but we will watch um, about five minutes of the interview. So let me go ahead and uh, share this tab with you guys. And we're going to hear what Mr. Russell Russell, ho hum hum, Mr. Yoga has to say. Three different girls after every show. Culturally, we thought that was. Hold on. I want to start from the beginning. Hold up. We're going to watch this tab instead. Okay. This morning, music mogul Russell Simmons stepping away from his businesses. Russell Simmons, now the latest big name, left to defend himself. Nine women accused Simmons of a wide range of misconduct, from vulgar language to assault to four instances of rape. What did he do? He raped me right up against the wall. Excuse my language. But he, that's what he did. <laughs> Secret. He showed up naked wearing a condom and tackled me to his bed while I screamed and fought and said no and cried. That's right. If the allegations are not true, why would all these women accuse you? I heard someone else say this, you know, that I was quite frivolous. Look, there's a song by Houdini. I'm a hoe, you know, I'm a hoe. Three different girls after every show. Culturally, we thought that was the right way. And the number of sexual partners and compromising positions I put myself in is beyond anybody's imagination. You said and you had more foursomes than most men have partners. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, and that was, that wasn't really, that was just, I think it was cultural and silly and egotistic and, and sad and, and from an insecurity that feeds it and a lot of reasons why we were that way. If you slept with as many people as I slept with, thousands. And we're talking about six people. There were like 20, right? I mean, that, oh, that I, oh, I, from oh, I spoke to Oh, to you mean like, to, that's not, yeah. no. I, I spoke poorly to, to 15 of them. I mean, 12 of them. I spoke poorly all the time. I'm a deaf comedy jam guy. I was crude. So how many compromising situations was I in? And if you call that person and say, can you help me help these other women? Then you can get them to tell a story and reimagine a story. And I'm not here to say what they were thinking. But I can simply tell you that I was in so many compromising situations that people can have a recollection from 30 or 40 years ago. And it can be different from my recollection. And it could be one where there was perhaps collaboration. If you had more foursomes than most guys had once, could someone leave and feel hurt? Could someone leave and feel they wish they hadn't? Could someone reimagine a story out of thousands of people? Could someone want notoriety?
in a market where people thirst for fame, even infamous. Could someone who just came out of jail and want to sue you because they had an experience and they can reimagine it just a little bit different? And could you be vulnerable enough to accept it? I took nine lie detector tests. People don't know that. Nine separate. Seven from the chairman of the Polygraph Association. One for each of the serious accusations. One for the, when someone said, for instance, I was violent. One person said that. I've never been violent. Took that. And one for I apologized. I never apologized about assaulting anyone. But if two people say it, because one said it and me too, and second person said it, then I took a test for it. Three hours per test by two polygraph examiners. One that I've never done this to anyone and one I've never done to each individual. Do y'all, I'm sorry, do y'all hear these crickets in the background? Even the crickets are like, boo, shut the fuck up, you're lying. Dear, 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 dear. Do y'all hear how the crickets are getting louder as he's talking? People say this, they're not accurate. But if they're 94% accurate, I did nine of them. It's pretty clear that uh, I don't believe it. I even asked if, well, what if I believe it? But it's not true. He said, your subconscious will get you. I said, I don't know how true that is, but that's what was told to me by the chairman of the Polygraph Association. He was filmed, by the way, you know, talking about this. So this. Okay, I can't. I, let me come back on the screen. Them crickets are creeping me out. Yeah, I don't like bugs. I don't like a lot of weird noises. I have really sensitive ears. Everybody who knows me in real life, you can't even call me with your windows down and the wind blowing. It really hurts my ears. So I can't listen to any more of that bullshit. The crickets getting louder and louder as he's speaking. Bitch, I hear y'all. Even the crickets pulled out their tiny violins on his ass. Russell, shut the fuck up. First and foremost, okay, let me let me say this, okay? Let me say this. You dated a sophomore in high school at the age of 35. Okay, at your big age, Kamora Lee was in the 10th grade. She was a sophomore. When you was going up to the school, picking her up, and you know, her mama condoned it. Um, so I don't really put anything past you because you and your wife are like 30 something years apart, okay? On top of that, his whole thing is, I took, you know, nine polygraph tests. I took seven of them by the state of whoever in New York, you know, administered them themselves. Let me say this. Russell's a very, very woke person, right? He's into like Buddhism, mysticism. Um, and when you're into things like that, there's certain things that you can do where you can like play with your heart rate. Um, you can go into deep meditations. There's certain things that you can do to change how a lie detector tests, how the results will come out. You know, because he's, a, he's, a, he's very spiritually in tune now. He wasn't always spiritually in tune, but he is now. So you mean to tell me that he couldn't have been there at the lie detector test, holding his breath, you know what I'm saying, for like extra amount of minutes, doing things to change his heart rate? Like, for all I know, this fool could have astro projected while he was tied up to the damn lie detector machine. His damn soul could have been in Bali and his physical body here in New York. Like, fuck out of here. I'm not buying that at all. I'm not buying it. His ass was probably astral projecting all around the room and shit. <laughs> looking down at the damn, looking down at the damn person giving them the test. Like, oh yeah, I'm about to pass this shit. <laughs> and then as soon as it was done, he fell back into his body. I mean, I know it sounds crazy. It may sound like a reach. But hell, anything is possible in this world, okay? Anything is possible. But I, I'm not buying it. But I will say this, let me, let me also be fair to say this, right? Um, one, I think it's disgusting that anybody would be proud of sleeping with four women in one night, you know, having thousands of sex partners. You know, I, I just feel like part of that comes with low self-esteem. And I don't care if you're a man or a woman. If you gotta spread yourself that thin, when you gotta sleep with everything that walks, that says a lot about you and how you really feel about yourself. Cause there's a such thing as slow ties. I don't want hundreds of men knowing how I get down in the bedroom, knowing my essence, you know, that just, that's creepy to me. You know, so imagine just like banging every girl that comes to your show. That's just disgusting. 
But I will say this as well. Are there real victims in this situation? Absolutely. I believe that the truth is stranger than fiction, right? I believe that in all these cases, there are real victims, right? Just like the R. Kelly case, there are real victims. But there are also women who are not real victims. Because one thing that does also happen, and I'm going to keep it real. Y'all can get mad. Y'all can, you know what I'm saying, be pissed off at me. But I've said this before. Regret does not equate rape. You have some people who regret the things that they've done and they've allowed men to do to themselves. Then when they get older and they're sitting back thinking about it like, damn, I was really used up and, you know, I was a fucking pass around. Now, you know, they're in their feelings. And I just got to keep that real. I'm not saying that these women who have come out are not being honest with their stories because I feel like there's some deviant shit with Russell Simmons. And I've been saying that for years. I've never been a fan of him. I don't like when people try and switch up their persona that much. Just like brother love. You know what I'm saying? You went from being, you know, oh, it's all about the bling bling era and I'm Diddy and you know, can't stop, won't stop. Take that, take that, take that. Till you know, I'm all about love and peace. Bitch, since when? And that's how I feel about Russell Simmons. If y'all know the old school Russell Simmons, that motherfucker was doing eight balls of coke and all types of shit. And now it's, oh, peace, peace be unto you. I, I don't like stuff like that. When people change their personality that drastically, it sounds like you're running from your demons. And you know, you're getting older and you probably hell bound and you're trying to atone for all the fuck shit you did when you was younger. So the, the change with Russell and Diddy, that ain't never sat well with me. But with that being said, regret doesn't always equal rape. Because see, the problem is a lot of these chicks, you know, we like to say they're also sexy reds, it's the Sukihanas. Oh, there was some big old freaks in my day too, okay? A lot of y'all was running behind two live crew, doing all types of crazy shit on stage for attention. Freak Neek. Now I never went to Freak Neek because I was a broke ass little girl. So I never had no money to travel. During spring break, our travel was from St. Paul to Minneapolis, okay? And we just kicked it out there. But a lot of folks who had money traveled down to Freakniks. A lot of y'all's mamas and aunties and everything else. I saw some of the videos that came back from Freaknik in the late 90s. Y'all hoes was sucking dicks in cars, letting random guys run trains on y'all, doing all types of shit. I'm not saying maybe they weren't high or somebody, you know, spiked the drink. I don't know. But it was a lot of freaky stuff that was going on back in the day, okay? Pull over, that ass is too fat, too, too, pull over, that ass is too fat, okay? So, and I think what it is for some people, and, and Kay Harris, you can thumb me down all you want to, bitch. I don't care. I'm about to speak my mind, okay? You're here watching me. I'm not watching you. But what I'm saying is that are there real victims in these situations? Absolutely. But the problem is when these cases come up, you also have people who weren't necessarily real victims. They're people who are now living with regret. They're people who are passed around, used up, and now they have nothing to show for it. Because that was the mentality for some women is, you know what I'm saying, use what you, use what you got to get what you don't got. Players club. You know, sleeping with guys for money. Oh, he's a baller. He's rich. He's the, you know, the, the, the balling ass dope boy. So I'm going to sleep with him and, and get money from it and get paid and I'm a freak and this, this and that. And then when you're at home alone and you got to look at yourself in the mirror and all these bodies that you've collected sexually, it fucks with you as a woman. Because as a woman, I don't care, I'm about to preach right now, we are not built like men. A man can sleep with a thousand bitches and there's no connection for them. But we're not built like that. We can try and lie to ourselves and, oh, I'm a freak and, you know, big sexy and, you know, I'm suki and I can, you know, we, we can lie to ourselves, but that's not how our bodies work. When you are giving yourself to somebody, you become really spiritually connected with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's very hard to tap that off as a woman. Like at first, it's like, oh, I'm getting money. I'm a prostitute. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an escort. But after a while, it really starts to bother you. And it takes from you. You start to look old and withered. And you know what I mean? Because you've been with so many people and they just used you. And that's what I'm saying. Like, we, we got we to gotta change that narrative. We're not men. We're not built like men. So that's why I don't really like some of like 
how the rap girls be rapping. Like, you know, it's just, you know, I'm a city girl, fly me out. You know what I'm saying? I'm a fuck for a bag. And no, if it's like that, then why are you on social media crying and running behind Diddy, Carisha? If it's just about the money and the city girl lifestyle, why are you in your feelings? Why are you fighting and, and you know, going back and forth with Diddy's other chicks? If you're so proud of that lifestyle, because your feelings are involved, because you're not built like a man, you're a woman. And that's just, I'm just keeping it real. I don't trust none of these high power guys as far as I can throw them. But let's, but let's also not act like there are a lot of women who did a lot of freaky deaky shit back in the day and they have nothing to show for it. So I'm going to jump on this so I can get me a bag. I'm just saying. Yeah, and I'm unbiased. I'm going to keep it all the way real. It doesn't excuse anything. It doesn't take away from the real victims. But that's the problem when you have cases like this. You have a mixture of everything. And then you got to sort out, you know what I'm saying, who were the real victims, who were really, you know what I'm saying, affected by this man, and who was just here for trying to get a quick bag. And there's some real victims, because I, I did my own little deep dive. I didn't never, you know, make a video. But I did my own research into a lot of the allegations that were levied against Russell Simmons. And they were very disturbing. He definitely used his position of power at Def Jam and other places where he was assaulting even women who worked for him. So he was, he was definitely a sicko and a deviant. And this is why a lot of these men are overly protective of their daughters because they know all of the sick demonic shit that they did to other men's daughters, other men's mothers and sisters. Isn't it funny that when it comes to his beautiful daughters, Ming Lee and Aoki, notice they're not out there like that? Beautiful girls, super smart, got their degree. One from NYU, the other from Harvard. Aoki speaks several languages. Notice she's not out here thotting and bopping. Diddy's twins, they're under armed security guard 24 seven. The games, you know, always crying about his daughter and no, his shotgun for any guy, but had no problem violating other people's daughters. T.I. and Hyman Gate. People have to watch how they treat other people's daughters, mothers, and sisters. Because like I always say, the same tears that a woman is crying for you will be the same tears that you're going to be wiping off your daughter's face. Best believe that shit. So, I don't know, man. The whole situation is crazy. I couldn't get through his interview. I can't do crickets and weird sounds. And the fact that those crickets were getting louder and louder as he spoke said a lot y'all know animals have intuition and them crickets was like boo boo tomato 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 shut the fuck up lying and shit <laughs> them crickets had their tiny violins honey i'm like is it just me or that because i'm i'm looking around the room and shit like is there a cricket in my house like what the hell they just start getting louder and louder oh we russell your your spirit is not right sir them crickets wanted him to shut the hell up. Even they were like, give his ass a tall glass to shut the fuck up. Because none of this makes any sense. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.